I'll tell you why, Ken. Because they're eating high deuterium foods. That's why. Simple as that. High deuterium foods. And a lot of the modern ones are also consuming a lot of seed oils, which is another, which is extremely high. But most of the plant foods that the vegans are consuming are very high in deuterium. It's simple as that. And if you've looked at it in my videos on deuterium, you realize how the nano motors are busted inside the mitochondria and then the you know they can't produce enough energy they signal to the cell it upregulates oncogenes it forces the krebs cycle into reverse it pulls in deuterium ions from the cytosol into the krebs cycle and produces you know and also drags in through alpha key get a glutarate more glutamate and stuff like that and starts producing a lot of lactate because you know it can use the lactate to produce more sugar in the liver you know, that's what it's doing. Um, so in order to inhibit that, obviously you've got to lower the deuterium, the deuterium depleted water to stop that from, you know, to providing that capacity. But on the other hand, you also need to fix up the mitochondria. And that's where taurine can actually help remove the glycation and increase the production of melatonin inside the mitochondria the only molecule that can actually do it. I haven't done the video yet, but taurine directly increases. It's a cofactor within the enzymatic pathways to produce melatonin inside the mitochondria in order to basically repair, because that's what mitochondria, you know, so all day long, you know, the pineal gland gives you, you just for the sleep signaling, but the stuff produced not for the cells, but inside the mitochondria and, uh, in you know, that is produced, requires taurine. And taurine, as it drops off in older age and in a vegan diet, it's very low. You can't produce enough melatonin inside the mitochondria to repair the damn things. So you're damaging them on the one hand and not repairing them. So obviously you're going to be shifting more cells into a senescent state. Plus they're not eating enough nutrients to basically support their, you know, because remember to activate naive T cells, what do you need? Taurine again in the thymus without and vitamin D to create stem cells for the thymus. So if you don't have enough of these, that's the first line of defense. I have actually put a video recently about explosive cancers, how COVID reduces T cells, and then you get these explosive cancers in people. Um, there's a doctor, a British doctor, that's actually been talking about it, um, how you know, the that as well can actually um, cause this reduction in, in T cells. This is the reason why I use taurine as a supplement um, when there's, you know, um, respiratory infections around and maintain my vitamin D levels in order to basically make, make sure that my T cells are primed or in a good nick to be able to kill off anything that comes through the body. Um, and so that also means that T cells, and that's the other thing that I'll talk about earlier about interleukin-6, upregulating interleukin-6 with TA1 um, peptide. So that's another method to push up the, the number of um, T cells to basically kill off um, the cancer cells. The problem is a lot of people are getting, due to the continuous jab of the hut um, thing, not only affecting the microbiome with their bifidobacteria and all that, causing other problems and the lactobacillus, but they're also uh, reducing the number of um, T cells, T lymphocytes. That's a problem, and that's creating a whole lot of other issues. Um, yes, I've had people recently come to me with those sort of conditions. It's very hard. Uh, so, yeah, that's really one of the reasons. Um, and people are completely oblivious to this, to the way these mechanisms work. But, uh, yeah, we do need to be able to produce melatonin all day long inside the mitochondria. Um, and we need those to support those enzymatic pathways inside the mitochondria to, to produce the stuff to repair the electron chains and repair the nanomotor that rotates uh, um, to produce ATP. 
so which is the currency of energy in our body so if we don't look after the mitochondria we're going to get into greater risk and vegans just don't do that they really put themselves in a vulnerable um space so you know and as you know as an orthodox christian a fellow human i feel for them as well i'm i'm against their their contraindicated diet i'm not against the people you know i love them and i hope you know and when they do come to me and ask for help i try and help them as much as possible i don't um uh, you know want to see them um you know harming themselves so it's out of you know love that i care about them and i criticize their ways you know the people that i think are really you know demonic in their thinking are probably people like you know mick the vegan and uh some of the others uh, hinch um and people like that or even you know there are some worse characters out there you know richard's one of them he's just you know a canadian guy just completely nutter utterly you know he's a nutcase you know so but even him i don't hate i don't hate him as a human i just hate the the, the and despise the belief systems which is just you know it's just a, a really evil ideology that's uh, really harming and i always say to people i try to wake these people up i say show me please show me one multi-generational vegan society anywhere in the world that has ever existed none of them do none of them exist you could do vegetarianism you can use dairy eggs and you can use basically crustaceans and things like that or some people who also do fish not always some do just crustaceans and they won't do fish so they get their minerals they get their b12 from crustaceans they can get all these other nutrients and so they're going to have less problems but you know their vegan diet now has gone you know and even the and even the general plant based you know the vegetarian side has gone far more towards plants even more than in the past um because i've done like a video in the blue zones and i do cover the low melinda people and 50 percent of their diet was dairy you know and grundy had actually seen um the actual the food guidelines in the hospital in the low melinda you know he explained exactly what it was so, you know add to that you know the eggs and uh, and some of the seafood and you've nearly two-thirds of it's animal based so completely what um in contradiction to what these modern day vegans are actually claiming they don't even know what the diet was that these people were doing back then but go go now to low malignant and see how sick the population is that have shifted further away from those animal foods and fur and for, and, and are consuming far more less eggs less dairy um less seafood and are consuming far more plants they are way sicker nobody's talking about a blue zone anymore amongst those people because in their mid 50s and and 40s they're getting very sick you know so completely nonsense all this sort of stuff it's um this ideology it's crazy ideology um you just have to look at hitler he had he was a vegetarian and back then they weren't as severely restricting animal foods he was still eating dairy eggs and stuff like that and he had parkinson's you know he shook his hand shook you know he used to try to hide it by keeping it behind his back but it was quite clear obviously for anybody to see it you know so that is a neurological thing probably had other things other things um, he was a bit of a yes a very criminal criminally minded person it seems that those sort of people that have these um species and appropriate religious sort of uh, um crazy ideas tend to also have really yeah weird sort of stuff but anyway that's for another day to discuss his gnostic ideas because he was a gnostic um yes i'm not saying he's a satanist that he was a satanist but um well maybe himmler was 
a Satanist, um, definitely a pagan Satanist Gnostic, um, believed in the the God of power, you know. So, yes, but that's for, a, as I said, a very different day on that issue. But pretty much, you know, this extreme, these extremes of both left and right tend to have you know, embrace the same food types, you know, plant-based and stuff like that. You'll get in the extreme left and the extreme right. And you'll also get these sort of Gnostic um, belief systems, uh, you know, because even atheism is sort of has a Gnostic, you know, we have all the knowledge, you know. So, yeah, they these people tend to gravitate to really extreme thinking and they pay for it. You know, as you've pointed out, and I've seen stats as well, that you know, and, and some of and some people that I know in Hobart as well, um, you know, both friends and even some relatives that have gone plant based, uh, having a lot of problems, health problems, and stuff like that. But it just seems the cognitive dissonance is so strong; it's really hard to get them to think differently. Um, how much damage do they need to do to their life? Lose their life completely sometimes? It's, yeah. Anyway, 